Hi everyone, I'm Tom and today I'm going to be playing Scribbly Gum, which is a roll and write game where we play as these baby moths that cause the scribbles in Australia's Scribbly Gum trees. We're going to be venturing into these various paths, making squiggles all over the tree and finding lovely food to eat, trying to make the most meals and score the most points, we hope. It's designed by Phil Walker Harding, who you might know from games like Sushi Go, from Baron Park, from so many things at this point and originally publisher Joey Games, which you might see if you saw my video last summer, I think. There is a physical version of this with tiles, but it's been adopted into a roll and write version for this because Joey Games have collaborated with Postmark Games, who you might know from roll and write print and play games like Voyages, Waypoints, Aquamarine. Like all those games I just mentioned, Scribbly Gum is available now on the Postmark Games website. I'll put a link in the description. It's postmarkgames.com. For £5, you get a download of all of the sheets. There are several different sheets with different tree maps to explore. There are low ink versions and there will be future content added to the game afterwards as well. I'm going to start off with a quick overview of how we play this and then I am going to play a solo game of this. But it's a roll the right game and it's very adaptable. If you include the achievements, there is racing for points to try and achieve certain things more quickly than other players but you don't have to play with those to simplify it. And there's resources on the Joey Games website to play this in a classroom, because an unlimited number of people could play this at once. So as I said, this has been adapted a bit for a roll and write version, but you can play with this print and play version. You can play the classic mode. There is a little link to get a website that will show you a digital version of the tiles that would define where our baby moths moved in the original game. But I'm going to be playing the roll and write version here. You need two dice and you need a marker and you need to print off some sheets. There is a low ink version that I'm kind of leaning on some of our practice sheets. There you go. There's a low ink version to save you some ink when you're printing it out. But I thought for playthrough purposes, I need to go full color. So I've got the sheet printed. I've got my two dice. I've got a marker pen and that's all we need. To start a turn, one player rolls the two dice and based on these results, everybody will pick a direction to draw a line in. You can see we've got some colored in dots here. These are the spaces that we start from on our particular tree. And Kurangai here is the recommended starting tree. So I've rolled a three and a five. Everybody gets to use one of these results. Now you can see a little reminder in the corner here that tells you based on the numbers we rolled, which direction you can draw a line in. You see from these little dots, we have got many options of directions we can draw in. So rolling a three means I could draw a line going left. Rolling a five means I can draw it in a dotted line. Usually all the other lines you've got to do in these solid spaces, but the fives, the special dotted lines can kind of, they're, they're shortcuts through the tree, but you can only use them when you roll a five. So everyone playing gets the choice of one of these two dice. A six means nothing. If we roll doubles, everyone gets to pick one of the options of their choice. And we're all going to fill in a line on our sheet. That line will bring us to a new circle. You'll fill in that circle. And depending on what kind of food was in that circle, you will start at the top of the meal tracker. So if I went left, for example, with this three here, it would take me to this leaf. I would circle it, fill it in and I would fill in the top leaf in my meal tracker. In the future, you can fill in a line from any filled in circle. Certain spaces on the meal tracker, when they're filled in, give you a free line up, down, left or right of your choice when you gain that thing. There are certain spaces that have got multiple food items in the same space. So if I was to fill in this circle, I'd get three leaves straight away. After everyone's filled in their line and got their food and everything, we cross off the turn and then it's time for turn two. Roll the dice. Everyone picks one number. Well, in this case, everyone would have to draw a line to the right. If you can't draw anything for some reason, if you've kind of painted yourself into a corner, you just don't get to do anything this turn. But after seven turns, the round is over. You look at the lowest numbered line that you got all three foods for, because a full complement of three foods is considered a meal for our baby moths. And so for every set of three, every meal that we got, you get a point. So you would write that in round one score. And we would carry on to round two. Check how many meals you've got. It adds up. So all the meals you earned in the first round, you add to that in the second and third rounds. At the end of the game, if you filled any of the columns, there were three extra points each. Add up your scores and the most points wins. 
If you want to play with the achievements, you need to pick three of these at the start of the game. Everyone gets the, the same achievement possibilities. And these are things that we can race for. So you write A, B, C on three of those achievements. The first person to achieve them gets the bigger number of points. And if anyone's to do it in a future round, then they get the smaller number of points. But we could be racing to get at least 12 nuts, at least 12 leaves, at least 12 blossoms. Everything in the leftmost column filled in, everything in the rightmost column filled in, and everything in the four corners filled in. And not only are the trees different on the other sheets, but the achievements available are different as well. They were racing for sets of things and filling all of the triples. So without any further ado, let's have a go. So in the solo version, it's much like the original, you choose three achievements to use, but you've got no one to compete against. So if you complete an achievement in round one or two, you get the higher number of points. If you complete it in round three, you only get the lower number of points and we are trying to score the most points. If we can score 35 or more, we will be considered a scribbly gum champion of the bush. Let's see if we can do that. So I'm gonna roll a die three times because there's, there's six achievements here. So let's see what I'm gonna have. So I'm gonna have number four, number three, and finally, can it be a different number? Yes, two, three, four are gonna be my achievements. So I want to try and fill in the left column, have 12 blossoms and 12 leaves as quickly as I can do it. So let's start turn one then, roll the two dice and I get to pick something. Well, six is nothing. So I am picking four, which is a line going to the right. So that's gonna to have to be going in one of these directions. Well, I want to try and get blossoms, don't I? I also want to go to the left, which drawing a line to the right isn't going to help, but it, it's what we've rolled. So I'm going to go to the right over here. So I fill in the solid line. I have reached this circle. I fill it in. It had one blossom in it. So I fill in one blossom on the meal tracker. And that's turn one. So I can roll the dice again and let's see what we get. So we've got four and a six again. We're going to the right again. So let's see. Well, one thing I didn't mention, the leaves are question marks. They can be any one of the foods that you like. I think let's keep going outwards because there are some double foods over here because we, we do want to try. We do want to get leaves as well, don't we? Yeah, I'm going to keep going in this direction then. Keep going to the right on this one. I get a leaf and that's turn two. And then roll the dice, a five and a five. So they do correspond to a dotted line, but doubles means you can write anything you like. I think I'm going to go up because not only does it get me a blossom, this dotted line here would get me all the way to the leftmost column, and then maybe I can start work on that. So we've got our second blossom. That's turn three done. No meals yet. I probably want to get some nuts because we want meal points as well. Four and a four means I can do anything. So I think I am going to choose dotted, and I've got the dropper. I think there's not a lot of blossom in this column, and there are nuts coming up. I think I'm going to say blossom. If we're going to concentrate on doing this column, maybe we just won't get many meals in the first round. Okay, that's turn four then. So roll the dice and see what we get. A one and a six, which means we are going up or nothing. I could go up to nuts here, but let's get a leaf here because if we go one further up, then we could get three nuts. So another leaf and we're racing towards trying to get 12 of them before the end of round two so we can get the full four points. That's turn five. Really hoping for another up because then we'd have a couple of meals in the bank for scoring and actually getting a th third nut means I could do another line up, down, left or right anywhere. So a six and a two, we are going down. Not quite what we're after, but we can keep going in this column and we can get one nut. So that's one meal guaranteed. Fill that in, fill that in. Six turns gone. So we are hoping for a one or we're hoping for some doubles and we get a four and a five, not quite. So right or dotted line. I think I'm gonna go dotted line down here because maybe we can start filling in this column from another point and it's another nut. So then at least we've got two meals locked in. So it's the end of the round. I have to look at how many meals I've got, how many complete rows have I done in the meal tracker. I've only done two of them. So I only get two points for this round, but hopefully that can ramp up as we get to these uh, bigger places. So we're in round two now, another turn. 
And what have I got? A three and a three. That's good because I can pick anything. But if I go up now, if we roll up in the future, it's kind of wasted. I think I'm going to do a dotted line down here. Just try and get some of these shortcuts. That's another leaf. And we do want to try and get 12 leaves. Yeah, I'm happy with that. Because what if we don't roll fives? Watch me only roll fives for the rest of the game now. Oh no, six and six. So that would be terrible because it's nothing. But I can do what I like. So I think I'm going to go to the right and get this nut here because a third nut gives me a bonus here because it's got this outline around it. So another one up, down, left or right. I think I'm going to go to the right here and get these two leaves. One, two, because the second leaf gives me another bonus. There's a lot of blossoms up here, but I'm, I'm next to quite a few blossoms. I think I'm going to come out to the left here, just try and even things out a bit, but also... It's leaves and blossoms I want to race towards the most. So I've got another two blossoms. I think a lot of food there in the first two turns of this round. Still only on three meals, but that's all going to change. A four or a one. So up or right. Up could be anything. Up could be three nuts. Yeah, let's just go for it. And then we can use the other ups to go in another column, can't we? So one, two, three nuts. Evening it out. Still got four more turns to try and get 12 of these. This doesn't seem likely now, does it? The left column hasn't really gone with my getting loads of blossom. Let's have a look. Six and a four. So that is just right. So with right, we could get a leaf. We could get a nut, a nut, a leaf. Not many options going to the right. Oh, what am I talking about? Up here, we can get two blossoms. That would be fine by me. And the second one gives us a bonus. I think we'll go to the left here and get this blossom here. So that's 8 out of 12. That's turn 4. Give them a roll. And we've got a 3 and a 1. What's that? Up and left. Well, I like left better. This nut. Well, actually, there's, there's probably fewer options going left, the way I've done things. But I do want to get to this column, don't I? So let's have a nut there. So we've got five meals now. I'm pleased with that. Forget to write the turn. Turn six. I don't feel like I'm going to do any achievements in the first two rounds. Well, hopefully we get the points from meals then to make up for it. Left and right. Well, left or right. Which one would you like? Neither. I would have liked I would have liked up or down. I think I'm going to go right to get a nut because maybe it's far away now. We're looking at three blossoms there. So I get one more nut there. That's turn six. If we could get three leaves... I don't know that that's possible. Oh, yes, it is possible if we got it down. Not good for the achievements, but we'd have eight meals in round two. That seems nice. Okay, three and a one. Up and left. Well, we want it down. Oh, we can do that. So what if we go up and get these two nuts? And then I get a bonus move. Oh, it's a shame we were so close to... Doing the left column, weren't we? Two off. Well, maybe we can do all three of them in the third round. It does seem a bit too little, too late. But I'm going to get... Yeah, let's, let's go down here and get our three leaves. One, two, three. That's turn seven. How many meals have you got at the end of round two? We have got eight. And then let's just focus on trying to achieve them. So now we're in round three in the solo game. We can only get the smaller number of points, so... I'll cross off these big ones now. So let's see. The first roll, we've got a two or a three. Down or left? Well, down gets me these two blossom. And so that's 10 out of 12. And we've only got one more space that we need to fill in to do this column. So that's three points. That's turn one. What do we get now? I think an up or down, and then I can stop thinking about this column two or three down or left and i want to go right if anything as well right here to the double leaves get to more blossom so i think i'm going to take down so we'll go down here that's another leaf so we're on nine meals now and every circle in the leftmost column is complete we get the three points for achievement c then oh that's turn two don't forget to mark that oh we've rolled a six which means we can only go left well, if I go left, I could have a blossom. I could have a leaf. I'm going to go for blossom. 
because then we only need one more to get that achievement. That's turn three. Hoping for a right and ups, but I don't think that's happening now. Two and a one, up or down. Well, there's two nuts on offer here. I know it's not what the achievements are for. We could go down and then we're one away from the double leaf. Go on then. See, we haven't really rolled fives, have we? Uh, so nut, got 11 nuts, not that we need them. If we'd rolled A, B and C, that's kind of what I've been playing as if that were the achievements. Got a one and a six. So we are going up, aren't we? And nothing else. Can I get a blossom from going up somewhere? Yes, here. Or in anything here. We're not going to get to the three blossoms, are we? But we can try. So a single blossom here gives us 12, which is two points for achievement B. And if we can get three more leaves, we'd get another two points there. Maybe we'll get a column bonus. I don't know. I don't think I've filled in as many as I could have been doing. We could get some bonuses, though, if we fill these up. Down or left? We want right and up. So going left, I can have a leaf or a blossom. Not many options. Oh, and a nut here. I think the blossom. Terrible at following that line. What are we doing? So one more blossom. Because we might fill in the column. I don't... I don't know if we will. If I could do dotted lines with this, I would definitely go for those two leaves. But since I can't, let's just go out here and get these two going to the right. Oh, because this gives me a bonus as well. One more leaf will do it. I think let's go to the right here. We can have anything. I kind of want to say a blossom to try and fill in the column, but this will be the 12th leaf. So... Let's have that. So that was roll six. One more roll. Can we get two blossoms anywhere? No, we're miles away. Well, probably no columns then. A lot of meals. What have we got? A two or a three. So down or left. Ah, to the right. There's, some, there's two nuts. Well, two doesn't matter. You only really need one to get the 12 meals. If I could get two blossoms and fill that in... I would go for it, because then that would be three extra points. I don't think we're going for top rank here now. So I will go down. I'll go down to the two nuts here that I wasn't supposed to be going for. We ended up going for meals. So I now get 12 meals in round three. No column bonuses, I'm sad to say. And add up my points. 12 plus 8 is 20, 22, 24, 26, 29 which if I have a look at the rules, 29 tells me now you're really starting to blossom. 30, just one point more, would have been you are a regular moth Matisse, but 35 was what we were hoping for, scribbly gum champion of the bush. I think perhaps I focused too much on this left column and then still didn't achieve it in time. Fine to put all that effort in if you achieve something with it. But yeah, if I could have been closer to the triple blossoms, and there's some double leaves up here as well. When they're the two bonuses, maybe I should have just shot straight for this corner. So maybe some dotted lines might have helped as well. Who knows? I hope you have enjoyed this look at Scribbly Gum. Again, this is available from postmarkgames.com. You can buy it direct from their website for £5 or your equivalent. And you get this and multiple tree sheets. Now we've played the game. They will probably make more sense. So you could have the water gun tree where you start kind of in the lower right here. So it's going to make certain directions a lot more valuable, isn't it? And completely different achievements throughout. Like all 12 circles in the square around the starting circle need to be filled in. You want seven of each thing. I would have been pretty good at that this round. 15 of anything filled in. It's the one Rachel and I were just playing on before this. Uh, you want pairs of things. So you want nine nuts and leaves or nine nuts and blossom or nine leaves and blossom, depending on which achievements are in your game. Five out of the nine water drops, the bottom row or all three circles with the triples filled in. There, there and there. That's what I raced for. And you can see on the website, future content will be added to this as well. If you would like to see the, the classic mode in action, Last summer, I did a playthrough with the original boxed version that instead of rolling dice to get directions, uses a tile system, which, as I said at the start, you can still play with this version as well. So you get both in one. You just go to a website for the digital movement tiles instead. So yeah, loads in one package. I hope you've enjoyed this look at Scribbly Gum. Such a fantastic accessible roll and write, but still with the achievements and things and the different sheets. 
there's complexity and racing and stuff to be added to it. Or it can be left out if you want a simpler game. There are hundreds more playthroughs from me. I've actually got playthroughs for other Joey games, Pass the Party Food, Busy Beaks, and Waypoints and Aquamarine from Postmark Games, and now there's Scribbly Gum marrying them together. Thank you very much for watching everyone, and I'll see you for the next game. Bye!